Sulu Technology in Trondheim. <laughs> First of all, thank you, thank the organizer for having me invited me to this uh, symposium honoring Jens Ulrich Nielsen. I know that Jens thinks that uh, in Trondheim we always have winter, but sometimes we have to <laughs> die some day. <laughs> <laughs> and this, this year we haven't even had snow in the city. So things are improving. <laughs> okay. Um, I like to, uh, before I start, I like to, to point to uh, some collaboration we have with the Hotel Drops. We have uh, just finished uh, a large national project with natural gas conversion, and we have also started uh, a new project focusing on industrial catalysis science and innovation. And uh, it's uh, financing come from the Research Council of Norway, but uh, Hotel Drops is a uh, major contributed to this, uh, this, uh, this program. Together with uh, INEOS, and INEOS is uh, the former Moschino, making ethylene and, and, and the other things. And of course, the other it is then. Also, former Moschino, making the fertilizer. And we have Quarasmus making the novel metal catalyst. And there is a Genea, which was also part of Moschino in the old days. So I would like to, to talk a little bit about uh, fishing crops and also <coughs> some, uh, some uh, support that came out of our work with March Oxidation and Steam Report. Uh, I also uh, have this book in my, uh, in my office. It's been there since the middle of the 90s and in the middle of the 70s. And uh, at the end of the 70s, we had uh, David Trim was uh, a professor in at our department, and from that time on, we have learned very much about uh, his, his work in steam reporting and nickel catalyst. We, uh, as you know, in, in Norway, we have a, a lot of natural gas in the North Sea, and also up in the north, very close to, to the Russian border. Uh, some of these gas, you can take a short, a short, here in Cyclonden, in Cyclonden, in But it's not very much uh, chemistry done on this. We have a metal plant, we have take out the C2 here and send it to, to, uh, to the Ineos and the other factories. But out of that also it is stronger. Up in the north, of course, there is no pipeline to the to the to the main market. So here they make uh, LNG. And LNG was uh, planned to be sent to the US, but I don't think any ship has gone from from this uh, plant to the US, but they send it the other way to to, to, to Asia. And now with the, with the global warming, you can even send a ship. Throughout uh, this uh, area of North Russia. But in the 70s, when they discovered uh, this, uh, this natural gas, of course, we, we uh, at the universities we got a lot of money for studying natural gas. But even, even before that, uh, we have started to look at methane, because at Norwegian in the old days, they made their acetylene from carbide. And uh, carbide. Uh, Acetylene made from carbide is not the cheapest way of making acetylene. So let me, uh, let me uh, start a little bit with, uh, with the fission drop synthesis. As we have already heard, this is cobalt, iron, ruthenium, nickel. This is, uh, can be used as catalysts. Most of our work is done by, by cobalt. And uh, <coughs> this is the part of the, the process we have focused on, and in particular about the fission. If this is a polymerization mechanism, can be, uh, the, the product distribution can be uh, only dependent on the, the, the chain growth of ability. And you see there is only two products you can make with the high, high selectivity. It's the lead type and it's the vaccine. 
it is we use methane as a raw material. It's, it's no use of making methane again. So we of course focus our work on the, uh, the basis on the higher hydrocarbons. And uh, the higher hydrocarbons we need to, to upgrade by the bracket back to diesel with an excellent quality and so on. Now, oh, yesterday we heard a lot about uh, the, the, the detail mechanism of the, of the fishing pot. I will not uh, go into any details, but I suppose I suggest so, so, yeah, that it is assumed that this uh, polarization mechanism, that the C1 unit, is that it is a growing chain. And then all this, in every, every N, N atom, you can have uh, an absorption as an N particle or as an molecule. And all of it can be hydrogenated with paraffin. If you get a paraffin, it's out of the chain. Uh, the only thing can be reabsorbed, but from the presentation yesterday, it was it said that this is not a very true truly that this will happen. And of course, you can have a lot of, of different reactions, plant, solar, paraffin, and so on and so on. But I like to today to to focus focus my work and my discussion only on this uh, simple simple picture. C1 unit is added to a growing chain. At each point you can have determination by, by producing normal carbons or you can have uh, making organs, but the organs can either be reassorbed or they can be hydrogenated to the parties or they can be definitely in the, the reactor itself. See, ever since the discovery of this process, this has been a discussion about uh, the, the initiation of the mechanism. Fusion and drop, I thought about this carbide mechanism, the CO absorbed on the surface and dissociated in the carbon and oxygen. Since then, there has been insertion of, of carbon monoxide, and there has also been uh, several mechanisms uh, involving hydrogen uh, in order to get the. Uh, uh, absorbed carbon monoxide. So the thing I like to, to, to stress very hard is if you have a cobalt catalyst, water is a major product of course. All, all uh, oxygen from the CO is taken out as water. Not as carbon dioxide, but as water. And water has a large impact on the reaction. So please keep in mind that water is a major product um, <laughs> we have also, uh, okay, in the last year, there's been a lot of discussions about this mechanism, people with the modern tools so, or calculations, we can do all kinds of nice calculations, and we have also participated in this even ten years ago. And uh, I think, and we are pretty sure, that hardship plays a key role in the, in the, uh, in the absorption of the, of the carbon monoxide called an uh, hydrogen assisted CO uh, dissociation. And then you can form methane directly from this intermediate or from this uh, growing chain. We think that this depends on the corporate and on the, on the reaction mechanism. Let me, uh, let me say a little bit with this, uh, with this table. It's an open table, but I think it tells you the most about this. Uh, Reaction. First of all, we have tested the uh, different supports, alumina, silica, titanium. And it is very important that these uh, supports are pure, pure material. Even this commercial uh, alumina, some of these commercial alumina, contains small amount of sulfur, and then you will see that immediately on, on the rate, not on the selectivity, but on the rate. We also tested some uh, car, some, uh, some uh, cobalt supported on car, uh, carbide, silicium carbide. The activity was extremely low due to the contaminants of uh, alkali in the, in the, in the silicium carbide. They use alkali to, to produce uh, silicon, silicon carbide with high surface area. So, uh, the, the second thing is that if you want to compare, you have to compare constant conversion. As I will show later on, the, uh, the, 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 the selectivity.
idea depends very much on the, on the, on the context. You can see that the rent for ground capitalism increases if you promote, in this case, with uranium. But uh, the site time yield is constant. It doesn't change. Regardless of you use of uranium or platinum, whatever you do, the, the, the site time yield is constant. And you also see that uh, the, the, the C5 crystal activity increases a little bit from, from using aluminum to titania. And titania is, of course, having, having a higher, higher surface area, lower surface area. But if you now add water to this, we add in this case we add 20% water, of course, this resembles uh, conversion, very high, high conversion. You can see that in this case, Increase the C5 percent, and you increase it more if you have a, a support with a, with a high, with a low surface area. So water is extremely important uh, thing in, in this uh, system, and this is also part of the reason why you have to compare that constant conversion. So uh, for uh, for uh, cobalt catalyst, the turnover rate seems to be or is constant, provided that you have uh, Google parking sizes larger than about 7 to 67. It means that the, the, the catalyst uh, activity depends on the, the, the degree of reduction and the shape and dimensions of the particle itself. I think most people are agree about things that the internal frequency is constant. But if you go to lower, lower particles, of course, you get a decrease in the turn of frequency. And this is the picture from uh, the recent work of Brian de Jong, elegant work, and you can see that if you go below 6, 7 nanometer, uh, the turn of frequency decreases. But the bone is constant. It's constant for many different conditions, for uh, one bar, two bars, and even for 30. So in all cases, if you are below 6-7 nanometers, the turnover frequency reduces with the particle size, above it's constant. And uh, in, in Trondheim, as we've been so happy to work together with the, the young, with some transient kinetic works. And uh, from this uh, transient kinetic, we, we think that the, the lower turnover frequency with small particles to be caused by blocking of edge corner sites and lower intrinsic activity of the small terraces. Let's try to be shown in this picture. This is uh, Google supported on, on carbon nanofibers. It's easier to, to, to study than this uh, as a model system. Okay, so let me then go to the, to the, uh, the selectivity. Uh, this is uh, some plot uh, together with uh, people at, at uh, uh, Stafford. We have uh, looked at a uh, lot of our, our own data. And uh, you can see that the selectivity as a function of the particle size or of the volume get the same. We are below 6, 7, 8 nanometer selectivity tracks. Above that, it's, it's about constant millimeter, it's even peak. But if you go to the uh, alpha alumina, you get much better selectivity. And alpha alumina, of course, has a higher, has a lower surface area, larger pores, full volumes, pores, and they get much better selectivity than alpha alumina. So this indicates, of course, that the, the, the pore size is extremely important. And it is. But unfortunately, we have also did some work with uh, different uh, alumina, gamma, theta, delta, theta, alpha. And you can see that the theta alumina gave better selectivity selectivity than, uh, than the theta. It should not have done that if it was only the poor sizes uh, that uh, detected, detected uh, the selectivity. This confused us a lot, and we have Spend a lot of time afterwards to, to, to look at different uh, different 
force and power and support to exceed impacts of the result. But still, this is uh, somewhat mysterious. And of course, the, 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 the mass transfer effects are important in this This is uh, try to illustrate the board, and you have the, the, the product, the, the, the reactants are in the gas phase. They have to diffuse into the, to the, to the pores, into the active side, so you have the products, and they have to diffuse up to here. And uh, the catalyst pores, they will be filled with liquid products, with the higher other products, and, and water. Maybe I don't know quite sure what the condition water will be, will be a uh, in vapor or in, in, the, in the liquid phase, but anyhow, the, the, the higher other products will be in. To the liquid phase. From the liquid phase, the diffusion is much slower than in the gas phase. So, mass transfer effects are very important. And you can see it here very clearly. We have studied uh, different uh, particle fractions, measured the, the, the C5 selectivity, try to, to indicate the uh, average diffusion rate. And you can see that uh, the, 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 the rate, the relative rate, it's not that very important, uh, very dependent on, 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 the, on the diffusion rate for the particle size. But the selectivity is very, very dependent on the, on the diffusion. Of course, there is, uh, you, when you have a diffusion, you change the, the carbon monoxide hydrogen ratio uh, at the active site. And we have also done exactly the same measurements with the monoliths, where you can put on different layers on the inside of the monolith and you get exactly the same, the same picture. Uh, diffusion is not very great, it's all the same, but uh, selectivity, of course, depends very much on, on, the, on the diffusion. Okay, <coughs> so now it's uh, uh, the uh, the perfect uh, support in high uh, selectivity to the uh, C5. <coughs> but there is one problem with uh, this alpha alumina, and you cannot use this in the initial area. Because the mechanical strength of these particles are very, very good. And you can see here, this is uh, some dihydrated from, from some from subtle patterns. You can see that. When alpha alumina is attrition, uh, you cannot use it. For <coughs> So, uh, again, we need this very tight practice, and this is very tight practice. So, uh, here is the thing that comes to the end of the work with the team reporting and the partial organization. We have also, for, uh, for, uh, for many years, been working with the uh, nuclear systems, partial organization, and the team reporting. I made nickel 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 and we have prepared alumina uh, spinels as caps for, for this uh, for the system and also then some other systems. But this uh, thing I would like to, to follow a little bit uh, closer. And we uh, we prepared this uh, spinel structures by uh, the uh, impregnation of the alumina, nitrates of precursors, standard way, dry the air and we calcine it by, uh, by heating to almost 400 Kelvin and stay there for, for 10 hours. And then we sieve it to small fractions. And if you now look at the, the, the temperature program, you can see and uh, it means that we just put uh, methane or the gases and measure the, the hydrogen production. And if we uh, took the, 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 uh, the uh, material, did not make any reduction, you can see that we had to heat it up to about 900,000 degrees Kelvin before it gets some evolution. But if you reduce this material at, uh, at uh, 
one person and we sort of the GFK together, we get a very active catalyst for the main scientist association. You will start it at the same time. Okay. And uh, we, we, uh, we produced uh, a nickel catalyst supported on these uh, this, uh, spin and structures, and they were very active for the and if we do that, uh, uh, this uh, uh, temperature probe TPR of this nickel uh, aluminate, you can see that we can heat it up to about uh, more than 1000 degrees degree without nothing happens. There it is, it is the case. So, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, nickel aluminate spinner catalyst. Uh, if you know tritium at uh, in Adrian at 1073 K for two hours, they produce the uh, active catalyst by creating small little particles. But this also the spinner catalyst uh, exhibits very high stability and, and performance in, in particles. But the nice thing is that if you now measure the, the attrition of these, uh, the mechanical strength of these uh, catalysts which contain nickel, 7%, 10%, you can see they are very mechanical, uh, have a very good mechanical strength. And they can be used uh, very, very nicely in the exterior. But the question, of course, is if this nickel will have any influence on. Now we did uh, to, to several different uh, different experiments. We made this alumina for the spinel and the decay, and we produced the spinel among as you see naked. We also made these catalysts just to add these nickel among as you see as promoters. But this is the most uh, important and what I will focus on. And the, just to, to see that this uh, Improve the attrition properties by communication. This, this is our uh, starting material, gamma alumina, and this is the alpha formula. Just it produced it from, from gamma by heating to high temperature. If we do the spin out structure, here with the fibers of nickel, we can also do some magnesium. You can see the very, very good uh, attrition properties of this support. Very good properties. And then we took the forces into to our lab reactor and measured the, the C5 crystal activity. Uh, and you can see uh, for these, uh, these spinels uh, structures, zinc modified, magnesium modified, and nickel modified. Very good crystal The same cell activity as obtained in the But if you use them as a promoter, you can see that it is very bad, bad results. So, we have, uh, we have uh, uh, also looked at uh, the reactivity and we see that it can so, uh, all support it on the nickel spinel structure. It gives the same uh, results as if you have Google supported on all of them. So, at least in our tests, we have no influence on nickel. I, I, uh, no, I have uh, I will not do any uh, discussion with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with uh, the deactivation. We have spent a lot of time on, on deactivation. And in fact, these, uh, these structures, this pool uh, on these, uh, these uh, spinel structures, they are very stable, so very stable. In fact, they, sometimes you can think about that they deactivate less and on uh, the normal level. I'm not sure if that's correct. This is the The very strange thing with, with, this, uh, with this system is that if you put them in the microreactor, <coughs> as you heard uh, the, uh, the first presentation uh, yesterday, these catalysts deactivate less in, in, in the, in the, the microreactor than in the expander. I don't know why. But I have tried it several times, and they deactivate. 
Of course, my uh, my uh, best memory with uh, yes, Rostov is uh, is, uh, is uh, the gas conversion meeting in Rio. I get congratulations from yes. It was a nice moment in my life. And of course, then I will uh, also end with inviting you to, uh, to the next National Gas Conversion Council. Will be in Trumse. Trumse is far, far, far up in the north. Uh, I think that the latitude is about the same as through the way in Alaska. But uh, we are close uh, to the sea, and in, in June, it's usually a very nice weather there. And at that time, you will not see the, the night. This is this, this, the sun all the night through. So, thank you. <coughs> thank you. Questions? Yes. Um, did you see that when using your NIA or tools and catalysts for commercialization, that coking was a significant problem? Uh, the, 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 the coking uh, depends on, on the size of the, of the, of the metal particles. So the coking goes down, the particles are larger. What? The coking goes down, the particles are larger. I'm oh, sorry, I didn't. So the coking goes down, and the particles are larger. Yes. Okay. Interesting, they usually heard that sintering makes the catalyst worse. Sintering makes the catalyst worse, yeah. That's yeah, well, we can, of course, if you have a small particle, you have a high temperature, but sintering. Yes. They sintering. No, they sintering, yes. Yes? What fraction of your sample is being able to illuminate? Is it only a surface layer, or is this completely reactive? Do you put the nickel on the aluminum? Uh, if you, if you, uh, I think you can, uh, if, you have, uh, if you have your, uh, your alumina, you can put about 30, 31% nickel in it to, to, to have it uh, flow the whole sample. So we are not, uh, not uh, putting uh, nickel in on the whole sample. We put uh, 5%, 10% nickel in it. And we could represent it put about 31%, I think, to, to make a complete spinner. I think it's 31 from 2.2 or something. Yeah. So, is that because it's partly alumina and partly nickel? What? Is it uh, only a fraction of it is spinel? No, I suppose so. I think <coughs> it, uh, or it, uh, there is also at, uh, at all of these particles, and maybe on, on the, most on the outside of these particles. Otherwise, we have not, I must mean, admit that we have not studied that completely. But we have, you know, that you, you could put 31% uh, nickel to have a complete spinel. You know, Any more questions? No? Okay. No. And uh, the next speaker.